G'day viewers. We're having a wee dram of whiskey because Stefan has asked me to do a um, video about how to make a Highland Taj in preparation for an upcoming seminar. So here you are, how to make a Highland Taj. So the Highland Taj was a usually wooden shield, um, traditionally covered in leather and decorated with studs like so. Um, the real ones were, if they're high-end, were made of uh, cross-ply Scots pine, um, so quite a heavy resinous kind of wood. Um, and according to historical accounts, they were strong enough to cover yourself from shot with them. So they'd be able to stop a musket ball, or at least a spent musket ball at range. As well as wood, there are historical accounts of steel targets, which would have been a little bit like uh, Rotella. And even wicker target. So this one here is made out of a wicker basket lid. Um, and these are remarkably tough and stand up to even uh, bouting with steel swords remarkably well. In terms of size, uh, Taj has kind of varied a little bit from being about the size of a barrel lid. In fact, barrel lids were often used as a quick and easy basis for a Taj. So something about this size, which is just big enough to cover your entire forearm. Um, but they went up in size to being large enough to cover the upper body. Now there is a little bit of a warning here, okay? One of the Taj techniques involves turning the Taj over this way into a hanging position on this side. If your Taj gets so large and heavy that that becomes awkward and unviable, uh, um, then you lose access to that technique. So there is a kind of an upper limit to the size and weight of a Taj. So the Highland Taj has the great advantage of being about the easiest shield in the world to make. All you need is a circle, or in this case oval, and some Tajs were slightly oval, um, of circle of, say, wood, so this is just plywood or you could use a wicker basket lid or honestly even a plastic bin lid, lid okay any basis like that will work and as a simple quick training weapon it can be as simple as bolting a couple of straps on the back okay so these each have a couple of small bolts in there with a nice big washer to help spread the load and honestly that will do. Um, under here, you generally want some padding. Real ones had uh, leather over there stuffed with horsehair. Um, these days, a strip of closed cell foam covered in a bit of material will do the job adequately. Now, for the strapping, you can use something as simple as a couple of old belts. Okay, I go to op shops and grab old leather belts for precisely this reason whenever I can. But honestly, it's nice to have the hand front hand uh, held by a solid grip. Um, so this one has like a cupboard handle that I got from the hardware store. Okay, And all I've done is put a couple of small wooden spaces there to bring it out to the right distance off the edge of the shield. And having that solid grip gives you a lot more control over the Taj. Um, and is also historically accurate. Some Tajs did have these solid grips. Um, and then that, an old belt, and some closed cell, so closed cell foam covered in material, and I'm basically done. Um, and you'll notice here the nice big wide washers that are holding the belt onto the Taj, so it minimizes the chance of that ever ripping out. So most Tajs were flat, but as I say, we do also have references to steel Tajs in the more Italian Rotella style. Uh, this thing here is slightly concave in that manner, um, and this is a wooden bowl that I found in the hard garbage by the side of the road, which I thought would make a perfectly adequate Taj, and put together in the same way. Okay, a bit of solid cupboard handley thing, a bit of wood spacing it just out to there, simply bolted through the wood. An old belt chopped up and bolted on with nice wide washers and a bit of 
foam under there just for padding my forearm and that tarsia is also done. If you want to make one out of wicker what you're going to want is two old belts to start with which loop through the wicker like so. So this is the outside, this is the front and this is the inside. So the two loops of belt are put through for, like that and then again all I've done is put a little glue, that's just contact glue, a little bit of closed cell foam in there and that will form the basis of the Taj. This front one is nice and tight so that I don't need a solid hand grip and that will do perfectly adequately. Now, uh, after that you're going to want to cover it in leather. So you get yourself a piece of leather, big enough to cover the Taj and then simply sew through it, you can see I've just started this, um, and because it's wicker there's lots of holes for the uh, needle to go in and out of, so this is wax thread that you use for leather working, and you go all around the edge of that and you end up with something like this, okay? So that's a wicker bas basket lid, two old belts, or probably even one old belt made all that, and a bit of close cell foam glued to the back for padding. And my Taj is now done, and this is actually perfectly adequate for bouting with steel swords. Why would you use wicker over wood? Um, I'm only mentioning it because we have historical references to it, and it's really light. So if you are travelling, um, and luggage weight is a consideration, uh, the light training Taj is a good idea. So this is the one that I travel with. Um, it is a wicker basket lid and some padding and two belts, but it's also got stud work on there. Um, and that pattern forms both Page's cutting diagram and Page's footwork diagram. So it's actually a useful teaching tool as well. Um, the other useful thing about these uh, light training tages is that if you're using a non-steel sword for training, um, so we are quite fond of shin eyes, but uh, even if you're just using single sticks, hard, uh, proper wooden targes will damage your training weapons uh, fairly significantly, whereas the wicker ones are a lot friendlier for that purpose. So they have some uses for that as well. Our real targes did not have edging on them. But it's not a bad idea to put some on just for longevity. So this one, you can see the edge has taken a fair beating over the years, um, especially if you have a look there. And underneath the leather that covers it is essentially a belt blank. So I went to the leather shop and I got a sort of inch and a half wide strip of veggie dyed fairly thick leather, which they use for belts, and soaked it in hot water and tacked that on around the edge of the shield before I put the facing on. Um, so you can edge them like that. This one is edged by a circle of steel and this was just a strip of steel which was then beaten with a hammer and it took long one edge of it until it turned into a circle um, and that also helps preserve the edge of the shield. Uh, neither of those things are historically accurate or strictly necessary but if you're going to do a lot of this against steel swords and you want your tarsh to kind of last um, they aren't a bad thing to think about. Now if you are doing a wooden Taj and you want to make it fancy by covering it in leather and putting all the studs in, um, what you really want to do is you want to put the leather on and the studs before you put the grips on the back. And the reason is that uh, a lot of the things that one would use for studs, such as upholstery tacks, which is what I've used on all the wooden shields, are sometimes longer than the Taj is thick, which means they poke through the back and you get spiky bits sticking out the back. And if you have a look here, you can see the tips of all the tacks that have stuck through the back, which I've then taken an angle grinder to and run it over the shield and ground them all off before I've gone ahead and bolted the belts on and put the leather covered padding in. And that way you can end up with a very pretty looking tarsh on the front. Um, and not get nails coming through onto your arm in the back. Likewise, if you're doing leather covered wicker, you want to put, and you want a pattern on it, you want to put the pattern on 
before you put the leather on. So these are split pin rivets, uh, very short ones that you use for leather working. And I've just used them to put a pattern on the piece of leather before I planted it on the shield and then sewed around the edges. Um, so make sure you do that before you put the leather on and not try, don't try and do it afterwards. Or you can just paint them. So there's my three ravens design, simply painted on the leather after I put it on the wicker lid. So, um, oh, here's another alternative strapping idea. So again, just belts. And in this case, I've used a bit of sheepskin to cushion my arm rather than foam. So this, this one here is probably about 20 years old and is still completely intact. So as I say, these things do last a long time. Um, for the edging on this one, as an extra idea, I've got a bit of garden hose and I've split it down the middle and then I've just slotted it over the edge of the shield all the way around and probably tied it down a little bit before I put the leather on over it. So if you want to edge something and you don't have access or can't afford thick leather, uh, ordinary garden hose is a very good alternative, um, especially if you are covering it up with another layer of pretty leather anyway. This one is a steel targe that I made from something I found by the side of the road. It, I, it had bits attached to it, it looked like a bit like a satellite dish, but it's made of galvanised steel, so I'm not sure if it was a, what it was, but it was just left over in the hard garbage and I thought, oh, that will make a good shield. So you can use all sorts of found material to make these, they don't have to be expensive at all. Um, and this is otherwise made in exactly the same way as all the others. Um, in this case my solid handle is just a little bit of aluminium strip that I had lying about that I have bent into a handle, wrapped up to make it thicker, um, and that gives me that solid handle. And then I've just drilled some holes and bolted it through the whole thing. And here I have a very nice large but fairly light steel Taj. So a few little historical details. As you are probably aware, Tajas were sometimes used with dirks and sometimes had spikes in them. Now, some Tajas have their handles on the back quite close to the edge of the Taj, precisely to allow the dirk to protrude a significant way out the edge of the Taj like so. Um, so if you're going to do a lot of this, you want to do that. Um, if your handle is too far in, too much of the dirk disappears behind the tarsh and it becomes a little less useful. However, be warned, the disadvantage of this is that these knuckles are now close enough to the edge to become in danger of being wrapped by your opponent's sword during combat. Uh, so there are downsides to having this handle too close to the edge of the tarsh. Now the spike, uh, this is a friendly version with a knob on it, but I've also got a sharp version. Um, this basically screws into this boss. So I've just got a tiny little shield boss banged out of a, a sheet of mild steel. And under that, I've got a little pile of nuts um, into which this bolt screws. And the nuts are then, I've filled the rest up with uh, builder's bog, and that's become a solid thing with a screw thread down the middle. So the spikes, both sharp and blunt, screw in and out of the boss, like so. So I can have the spike in or take the spike out, depending on what I want to do. And that is historically accurate. They, they screwed in and out because you didn't want to have your shield spiked up the whole time, obviously. And the spike lived in a little pouch on the back of the shield, like that. Um, so it was always there to take in and out whenever you needed it. Um, now, spikes in your tires sound really, really cool, but again, are of limited use in, um, you know, bouting, particularly if you're doing broadsword and tires versus itself, okay? If you're primarily going to be um, attacking lines of muskets and bayonets, then yes, it's going to be more useful but you do have to be aware that the spike is not always a good thing, okay? They weren't particularly long, five or six inches at the most. 
but even that sticking out of your target like that does produce a target that your opponent can attack in order to leave your target out of the way. So probably the historical reason why the spikes were removable and not fixed was precisely that, because there are some circumstances in which it's actually not advisable to have them in. So, in conclusion, if you can get a basket lid or a plastic bin lid, or honestly even a metal bin lid, or a piece of wood about the size of a bin lid, uh, an old belt or even some straps, this is not belt, this is strapping off a, a suitcase or something, um, and a couple of bolts, you can basically make a Taj in no more than about 10 minutes, okay? And then all you've got to do is find a little bit of sheepskin or foam or something like that to bolt under there. Um, the one other thing I will add is if you are using a strip of belt or similar for this. Um, in order to tighten up this hand grip, um, a neat trick is to get a piece of rope or perhaps a, a short length of garden hose again and put it inside here and then fold the belt around it and sew it up. And that produces a, a nicer, thicker, easier to grab um, and firmer front handle. Um, for again next to nothing so if you don't want to go out and find yourself a appropriate cupboard handle or door handle um, all you've got to do is sew a solid tube of rope or hose into that over there and that will tighten that up so Taj is really really easy to make